Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And this is the Yahoo Editorial YouTube channel, and this is us going over Paul's letters. And this is us going over Paul's letters. Thanks a ton, Eli. I appreciate that. He's such a shy guy, he's just sitting here busting up, but uh, we know that you guys are all family out there, and so none of us are shy except maybe Eli, maybe Nicole, she's a little shy, but she, she's getting better at this, so... Thank you guys very, very much for joining us today. We are doing the Letters of Brother Shaul. And so for those who have not seen this series, we just got through doing 1 Timothy, Titus, 1 Thessalonians, and 2 Thessalonians. And we are not here to tear Brother Shaul down. All we are here to do is to verify that the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, that we are not violating Deuteronomy 4, 2. And that says, You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may guard the commandments of Yahuwah Elohekim, which I command you. And so those are our dogs, and our dogs are always going to do those kind of things. There's not really a lot we can do about it uh, except talk over them. And when you hear the ceiling, that is some rain on our roof. We can't do much about that. And when you guys hear the... Uh, birds, that is a bunch of chickens that we have in our house as well. So this house is like a uh, they're farm. Not, they're not free range. They're, yeah, they're not, uh, babies in a box. Yeah, so. they wouldn't work out with 10 pit bulls and free range chickens, although that sounds like quite the house. We might live in the barn. We might live in the barn. Okay, so let's do a quick um, recap. Uh, Jade, First Timothy, when we went over First Timothy, when we're looking at this as a book by itself. Is this book what we would consider doctrine? And when we consider it doctrine, we have to consider it as, are they adding to or taking away from the Torah? No, it's not. It, I would say it, not doctrine. First Timothy, we, can, we don't think should be included in the books. First Timothy talks a lot about widows. It talks about qualifying a widow at 60 years of age. There is no place in any of the scriptures that it says that. It does. They do do that in the actual religion of Judaism. And we're not Judaism. We're not Jews. We don't want to be Jews. You want to be Torah loving Yahushua. Keep, you know, it would be Torah observing Yahushua loving individuals. We need to have our faith in Messiah Yahushua. And we need to make sure that we are not walking contrary to the Torah. So when we have verses and books that go against the Torah, we all need to be Bereans and we need to understand what we are reading. Titus, Caden, do we find Titus to be um, what we would consider doctrine or not? I think it was like yes and no. I don't think we like, I think it was partially good. Like, like two of the books were good and the rest were. Two chapters, yeah. yeah. It had the stuff that qualified deacons. And there's no place in Torah that we have talked about. There's no such thing as deacons. We don't know what a deacon is unless you're out building a church. And we've never had a commandment that we know of that says we need to go build ecclesias like this. And what they call modern day churches are the 501c3 Sunday worshiping churches that are not observing the Sabbath day. The Christians believe that they can have any day that they want to be their Sabbath. And that goes against the Torah as well. So as we got into 1 Thessalonians and 2 Thessalonians, Eli, were you with us on this? Yes. Is this something we consider doctrine or not? So it's not doctrine, but it doesn't go against the Torah. There's nothing wrong with it. Right. And so when we consider what needs to be doctrine, we should never add to or take away from the Torah. And so a lot of Brother Shaw's writings can be confusing when we go down that road. And so today we are going to begin down the journey of Romans and reading Brother Shaw's letters on Romans. And so let us begin. And we will, we're actually going to be reading this in several versions. To our left at the top, we have the King James Version. To the right, we have the NIV Version. To my left, I have Caden, and, J and Jaden is right across from me. They're both reading Hallelujah Scriptures, and Nicole is reading the Amplified Bible. Correct? Yep. Nicole? All right. All right, so let's begin. Let's see if this is it has any problems, or see if we should add this to doctrine or whatnot. Let's begin. Paul, a servant of Yahusha Hamashiach, called to be an apostle, separated unto the Besorah of Elohim, when he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Yahusha Hamashiach, our Adonai, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of Elohim with power, according to the Ruach HaKodesh, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. 
among whom are ye also the called of Yahusha HaMashiach, to all be in Rome, beloved of Elohim, called to be Kadeshim, grace be to you and peace from Elohim our Father and to the Adonai Yahusha HaMashiach. Okay, so we are in the book of Romans, right? And this letter is to a, an ecclesia, to a church over in Rome. Now, Rome is not exactly near um, Yisrael. And so this was a, all of these places of these letters of Brother Shaul, they're, they're in set up ecclesias far away. And one thing we should probably take note of, and when you are, I guess what we call eavesdropping on a letter, none of these letters were to you. You are not a Roman. You are not in Rome. You are not back here. And we don't know exactly what kind of problems these little ecclesias or these little churches were having. So if we take things as doctrine, it has to line up with Torah perfectly. And if it doesn't, then we need to put it on a, a side burner and we need to observe it and understand it. Okay. Verse 8. First, I thank my Elohim through Yahusha HaMashiach for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Okay. Right here, this is a Trinity breaker. All right. So he thanks his Elohim, thanks Yah through Yahusha HaMashiach. Why would he thank him through? What does that mean, do you think? He's thanking him through the uh, Spirit, through the... Uh... I think it's how, how we pray in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, right? Because if, if that's what Messiah Yahushua said, if what we ask in his name, um, if it's the will of the Father, it will be granted to us. And also nobody can go through him to get to the Father without right. him. Right, exactly, right. Perfect. Thanks, Nicole. For Elohim is my witness, whom I serve with my Ruach and the Besorah of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. Make your request, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of Elohim to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now this is the rain I was talking about, so hopefully this goes through just fine for you guys, and we will continue on. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among the other nations. I am debtor both of the Yahuvium and to the barbarians, both to the wise and the unwise. Did you right. say barbarians? It says barbarians. Mine says foreigners. Foreigners. Uh, this is and he says uh, Greek and non-Greeks. Greek and non-Greek. This actually has barbarians with a capital B. On it, um, and so yeah, that is for it says the barbarians. So I guess they thought uh, the non Greeks, non Greeks were barbarians. All right, so there we go. Mine says to the cultured and the uncultured. Cultured, no cultured. Maybe you scoot a little by well, with I this was. rain. You can't really hear your sweet little voice here. Okay, so it says what? Cultured and uncultured. Cultured and uncultured. So if you're uncultured, that makes you a barbarian. <gasps> that would possibly mean that my kids are barbarians. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. It's all right, guys. I'm just kidding. All right. So as much as is as in me is, I am ready to preach the Besorah to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the Besorah of Mashiach. For it is the power of Elohim unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Yahudi first, and also to the Yavini. For therein is the righteousness of Elohim revealed from faith to faith, and as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all wickedness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Okay, so what does that talk about? If, if, what is the, if, if Elohim is coming with wrath and he says he's going to against all wickedness and unrighteous men, how do we define what a wicked and, un, and a righteous man is? Exactly. Someone who goes against the Torah. Right, because we don't have any other way to know what sin is. Sin is defined as in the Torah. All right, so let's continue on. Because that which may be known of Elohim is manifest in them, for Elohim has showed it unto them. For from the creation of the world, the invisible things of Yah are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and divinity, so that they are without excuse. All right, what do you guys, he says, the invisible things of Yah are clearly seen. What, what does the, he mean by this? Uh, it means he sees anything that's hidden. Yeah, but no, it says, from the creation of the world, the invisible things of Yah are clearly seen. What are the invisible? Spirits. Spirits. What else? 
Demons. I would say creation in of itself, right? You can't see how it got created, but we can see the effects of it. We see that there are trees that grow up that are perfect. We see that human beings are made in a perfect form, that all the animals are made in a perfect form. Eli, what you got? So where yours says divinity, the KJV says Godhead. Godhead. And that is one of those um, trinity things, right? And so that is definitely not it. Um, it so those who... Have never listened to this stuff. If you are looking for a trinity where you think your creator and his son and the Holy Spirit are all one, that is absolutely incorrect. And you can go through the book of John and it talks it talks about the divinity of our creator and the divinity. It, it, they're two separate entities. And so when you see something like Godhead, that is where they have, the Catholics have, in fact, this was a Catholic um, hoax, right? They're the ones who said uh, the creator was one. He said, Jesus is God in flesh. And that is not correct. That is not what the scriptures say at all. It is the son of the most high. If it was God in flesh, then Hasatan literally killed our creator for a couple of days uh, before he rose himself up. So none of this makes any sense. Our creator did not suicide himself out for us. He allowed his son to be homicided um, for this. Okay. Here we go. And uh, so where are we at? 21. 21. Because that, when they knew Elohim, they glorified him not as Elohim. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible Elohim into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things. What it, what is it, what is he talking about, guys? When he's saying this, I think he changed saying, the glory of the. Oh. I think he's saying they made uh, they made idols. They made them the the Elohim and idols. Yeah, I th I think that is that is correct. Yeah, no, this is this is a great book. Twenty four. Wherefore Elohim also gave them up to uncleanness through their through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. And what does it mean right here? How, how are you dishonoring your own bodies with the lusts of your heart? What could that be? You eating unclean food. Pig. Pig. <laughs> Right? That's the lust of their body, right? And that's the lust of the Christians. They cannot put down their bacon strips, um, and that is the lust of their own heart. And it says right there, if you're sitting there eating the, then it's you're dishonoring your own bodies, right? That's not a good thing. I got people chuckling here. I'm not making jokes. I'm just saying, getting some sound effects for this. Okay, 25. Who changed the truth of Elohim into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator? who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, Elohim gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of women, burned in their lust toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Now, this just says, it, what it looked like to me is that there is a massive sodomy problem going on, right? And it's, it's, it, that's what we're dealing with right here. And all he's doing is, is Paul adding to or taking away to the Torah. Uh, Eli, if you can't contain yourself, hop out here. So it, he's basically saying, I think this is something that's going on in Rome, because I think they wrote back to him, he wrote back to them. And he goes, he's like, this is what happened to the days before. This is what happened back in the day, is these people, they started worshiping the creations. They started becoming sodomized, started doing these wicked things that are, like, not supposed to be done. Is any of this out of the Torah? No. I no, mean, this is exactly in the Torah. Yeah, this is yeah. in Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, and there's commands, right? A man should not wear what pertains to a woman. A woman should not... A man make, should not love a man. Right? And sodomy, we don't, we, that is a commandment. So he's basically just saying, hey, this is what happens. And, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible that men would seek another man. I don't know what's going on. All right. <laughs> and even as they did not like to retain Elohim in their knowledge, Elohim gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of Elohim, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of Elohim that they which commit such things are worthy of death, 
not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So what what is he saying here by all of these things? When he's, he's talking he's about talking about the commandment breakers, the Torah breaker, right here, everything here is yeah, the Torah. Everything, yeah. This is all. If you're unrighteous, you're a Torah breaker. If you're a fornicator, you're a Torah breaker. If you're if, wicked, you're a Torah breaker. If you're a whisperer, you're yeah. a rumor bearer. You're yep. against Torah. Murder, you're, you're a murderer. De- yeah, the whole thing. This is all. Devise of evil, disobedient to your parents. Absolutely. So this is this by far is the best book that I have seen so far that Brother Shaw has written, right? Okay, so let's continue on. Let's go into two, and hopefully the roof is not too loud for everybody out there. Um, and we will continue on and let the Ruach HaKadosh do his work, her work. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O man. Whosoever you are that judge, for wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you that judge do the same things. Okay, the Christians have completely said, judge not. Don't, don't judge me. Judge not, lest ye be judged, right? They take one verse out of Matthew. Nobody wants to be judged. Should we judge others? Uh, no. What do you mean, no? Like, as in judge, as in, like, um, slandering them? No. That's not should, judging. When, when we t- tell them that they are... Your neighbor's over there molesting a little four-year-old girl. Do you judge him? Absolutely. You should kill that dude. What is the Torah command for that? To kill him. No, what, that, beside that, what is the other Torah command? Rebuke uh, your, your neighbor, neighbor or, who is doing evil, sin. right? So there is a Torah command that we talks about rebuke your neighbor who is sinning. So there is absolutely precedent that we should be judging people, but we have to be righteous judges based upon the Torah, right? And it says right here, it says, whoever you are the judge, you can't do it because you do the same things. You can't be a judge. Do as I say. Right, you, you can't tell someone to do something when you're doing that. It makes you a hypocrite. It makes them not want to care. Total hypocrite. Right. Absolutely. Okay, do two. as I say, but don't do as I do. Yeah, don't do as I do. But we are sure that the judgment of Elohim is according to truth against them which commit such things. And think you this, O man, that judge them which do such things and do the same, that you shall escape the judgment of Elohim. I mean, this, this right here, I, it's, it's, it blows me away that this is a Christian book. The Christians quote all out of this, and it's completely on board with strictly everything with the Torah, right? If you, if you do not have repentance in your heart, that means you're living in wickedness. If you have nothing to repent for, that means you're perfect. None of us are. Messiah Yahushua is the only one. And Yah. Okay? But after the hardness and impenitent heart, treasure up yourself, wrath against the day of... R- wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim. Okay, we, this is all good. Who will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Now there's a comma there, it goes to the next thing, but it says right here, they do not obey the truth. What is the truth? How do we know what the, the truth, truth is? is? The first five books of the Bible. Yeah, the, first, the Torah, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. There would be no other way that we would know what the truth is. And so if the Christians think that they, it, it says they do not obey the truth. That means they do not keep the Torah, but obey unrighteousness. They're basically obeying Hasatan and his way. All right. So it says, uh, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil of the Yahudi first and also of the other nations, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good to the Yahudi first and also to the other nations. For there is no respect of persons with Elohim. For as many as have sinned without Torah shall also perish without Torah. And as many as have sinned in the Torah shall be judged by the Torah. Wow, those are, those are the words that you would think that every Christian would know. Romans 2.12 says, For as many as have sinned without the Torah shall also perish without the Torah. What does that mean, Jade? Mm-hmm. Jade, anyone? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you're breaking the Torah, it doesn't matter if you know it or not, you're still breaking the Torah. Yeah, and your last regrets will be that you did not keep the Torah of our Elohim, and now he's judging you, and you will be judged for your unrighteousness. In KJV, does it say Torah or law? Law. Yep, that's yeah, why. Yeah, because nobody nobody wants to keep the law. Oh, we, we for as many of us sinned without the law. Well, that's the Torah. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Okay, 13. For not the hearers of the Torah are just before Elohim, but the doers of the Torah shall be justified. Wow. Right there, it just it basically says, put down your ham sandwiches. Put down that pork chop. Don't order that pepperoni pizza. Don't do it. You don't need to do stuff like that, right? Stay away from that or you are the other nations. 
14. For when the other nations which have not the Torah do by nature the things contained in the Torah, these, having not the Torah, are a Torah unto themselves, which show the work of the Torah written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. In the day when Elohim shall judge the secrets of men by Yahusha HaMashiach, according to my Besorah, behold, you are called a Yahudi, and rest in the Torah, and make your boast in Elohim. All right, so we need to talk over the rain and not really scream, because I think everyone will be able to hear us, even though they can't, we can't hear anything. It's getting real loud here, guys. I think we'll end it at the end of this chapter. But let's walk through this. I think he just said it does not matter at the end of your death. It doesn't matter when you're getting judged. You are a Yahudi. You'll be considered the same as a Yahudi. Well, you'll either be called a Yahudi or you'll be called a Gentile. And people will actually say it's a good thing to be a Gentile, right? Everyone's like, oh, the Gentiles. Yeah, the house of Gentiles. The house of Gentiles. And guys, if you read the New Covenant, there is no such house as the house of Gentile. It just, there's no such thing. Okay, 18. And know his will and approve the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the Torah. All right, so we're going to pause real quick. We'll come back to you in just a second. Verse 18, trying to get it to calm down a little bit. And know his will and approve the things that are more excellent being instructed out of the Torah. Now, again, that's going to be law in all of your guys' things. This is why I do like the Sefer. The Sefer is, 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 has a lot of things right. Even though they have a lot of things wrong, they do have a lot of things right. 19. And are confident that you yourself are a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which have the form of knowledge and of the truth in the Torah. You, therefore, which teach another, teach you not yourself? You that preach a man should not steal, do you steal? You that say a man should not break wedlock, do you break wedlock? You that arbor idols, do you commit sacrilege? You that make your boast of the Torah through breaking the Torah, do you dishonor Elohim? So I guess the question is, why don't the Christians ever read Romans? Uh, this an, is in their... This, this is their chapter right here for them. Yeah, it, it is. It's like you're supposed to make your boast. If you make your boast of the Torah and you break it, you're dishonoring our creator. I mean, they don't boast any of it. They just say they hate it. Yeah, so. they hate the law, so they don't boast in any of it. Yeah. I, don't, I, I think I've come to the conclusion that they don't. Re we're, we're reading two different Bibles. It's two different things. They have two. They they serve another Elohim for sure. Because there's a man on the pulpit that picks and chooses what he wants to yeah, he tell does. his congregation. He does, and it's all the brother. It's all Shaw, brother Shaw's writings that have literally damned people because they will not read the rest of it. If they read the rest of it, it says this right here. Okay, for the name of Elohim is blaspheming among the other nations through you, as it is written. For circumcision truly profits if you keep the Torah. But if you be a breaker of the Torah, your circumcision is made uncircumcision. Okay, what does that mean? What is he saying? It means it doesn't matter if you're circumcised. If you're breaking the law, your circumcision will be nothing. Because yeah. circumcision is going to be your entrance into the covenant of Yahuwah. But if you're saying they're still breaking the Torah, you're still blaspheming his name. That means nothing. Yeah, the circumcision is a covenant that you are making with our creator. But if you're out there breaking all the other laws, what good is it for you to be uh, under the, the covenant of Yah? Okay, 25 or uh, 26. Therefore, if the uncircumcision guard the statutes of the Torah, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? That's a very good question, right? And I mean, those who are not able to be circumcised are, but they're keeping the laws. What, how do we account for that? I mean, they're doing their best. Yeah, they're, they're absolutely doing their best. And there's some people that are, won't be able to be circumcised just because we're, they're, they're grown adults um, and they don't have the money for it now. It's really expensive to do unless you have like a doctor that can do it. And still, it's real expensive. 27. And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the Torah, judge you, who with the scripture and circumcision do transgress the Torah. What is he saying here? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the Torah, judge you, who with the scripture and circumcision do transgress the Torah. So it says, you will be judged, even if you're circumcised. If you're still breaking the Torah, you're still going to get judged. It doesn't matter if you're circumcised or not. If you're breaking the Torah, you're going to get judged. Yeah, and it's it's. I think it's talking about the guys that are essentially saying. Sorry, guys, it's getting loud. We're just going to roll with it. It's the guys that are saying you don't need to be circumcised, or the guys that say you have to be circumcised, or there is no salvation for you. And that's that's not what we know. It's, it, it is a covenant with Yah, but it's not it's not a salvation thing. Twenty eight. For he is not a Yahudi 
which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Yahudi, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the Ruha, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of Elohim. All right, we're going to call this one good, and we're going to do it. Let's, let's finish off the discussion right here. So he's saying that circumcision is not so much as a physical thing as a spiritual thing, because it's your heart that needs to be sooner. Your heart needs to be changed toward God, because you're just doing, getting circumcised just to get circumcised to... Make to hang out with the Jews, or, right? Yeah, do whatever, right? It doesn't matter. You need to do it as your heart needs to be ready for Yah. Because if you're just going to go back and live your life where you're eating bacon and something, like, oh yeah, I'm circumcised. I'm one of Yah's people because I'm circumcised. So that doesn't matter. The rest doesn't matter if yeah. you're just living it as a sinful. Ab absolutely, eating. absolutely, yeah. The circumcision is a sign and it is a it is a law by Yah that we are to circumcise our males on the eighth day. Um, or to be in covenant because a lot of the other forefathers of ours didn't get circumcised until they were older. 100 years old. 100 years old. And so it is a sign. But unless you have your heart circumcised, which means that you are diligently seeking the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator, it wouldn't matter if you got circumcised. None of that would matter. If you jump in a car before the car ever gets there, you just landed on the ground. It's not going to be there. You cannot jump in the bus if the bus isn't there. Same kind of thing. If you just get circumcised because that's what you think you need to do, but you're not ready to be obedient to the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator, then why even get circumcised? You're just you're fulfilling one little piece of the law, but yet you're breaking every other piece of it. And what we are trying to discuss here is, is the law of our Creator gone? Has he put it on the cross? And it is clear right from Romans 1 and 2, the laws of Yah are not on the cross and that we should be keeping them at all times. And so for those who do not keep the law, statutes, and commands, I would strongly urge you to simply read your Bibles. Read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Read it as a love letter from our creator to you. And it is the best shot that we have of getting out of this existence that we are in. Because if you haven't noticed, the entire world has gone completely haywire. It's gone completely dark. Nobody wants to keep the laws of God. They're a joke to absolutely everybody. And it's a very, very small amount of people that are even interested in it. And there's very even smaller than that that are even keeping it. So it is something we can keep. We can keep it for all generations. And it is something we need to embrace. And so far in Romans 1 and 2, this is by far my favorite Paul book. So far, it, it sounds awesome. It sounds uh, okay. absolutely awesome. Yeah, I, I did not have this feeling with um, the other four books that we read. I mean, it was it was eavesdropping into another set of letters. So we will end this right here. And this is actually our family reading as well. And so hopefully we may get something today, but it sounds like the rain is going to take us to school. If we don't get anything else today, we love you guys. We thank you guys very much for listening. And we hope that this helped them, helped you guys out. It helps us for sure. So hopefully this is something that uh, you guys will write on your hearts, minds, and souls. All right. Sure. All right. Sure.